on, Terry. Hold him. I'm trying, Gov. But he's heavy and he's not my brother. Right. <laughs> oh, bastards. Key. <laughs> oh, Terry. What? Sorry, Tony. Come on, pick him up. Well, this is meant to be a pub crawl. Let the fat get cruel. Don't talk about Tony Harris like that. He's a great man. Yeah, great big fat man. <laughs> Stop it. Pick him up. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Lift with your knees, not your back. <laughs> <laughs> Lift with your back, not your knees. Can't we just leave him here? Oh, no, of course not. It's his birthday. Only for another ten minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, we can't get him in in the next ten minutes. Then he's on his own. Right, uh, here we go. Come on, Tony. Right, one, two, three. <laughs> Oh, 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 Christ, he's going, he's going, he's gone. Oh, 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 oh. I think I've dislocated my arms. Stop moaning. This is the best exercise we've had in years. I'm already starting to feel the burn. You know, when you get those shooting pains down your left arm. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's enough for now. Best have another drink, eh, Gov? Hey? Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. It's 11.50. The licensing laws of this great land forbid me from selling you a drink. <laughs> 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 oh, nice one, Gov. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it, I'll get it. <laughs> oh, it was witty and everything, that one, wasn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Damn these useless hands. Will this barman's hand never leave me? Look at me! Don't look at me! Here, yeah, I'll do it, Gov. Don't patronise me. Oh, but I'm gasping. All right then, Terry, just this once. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> you couldn't pop my arms back in their lockets, could you? Yeah, all right. <clears throat> <clears throat> my arms, my beautiful arms. I thought I'd never be able to feel myself again. <laughs> yeah. Who'd have thought Tony Harris had conk out after only 25 pints, eh? I have to say, Gav, for such a big bloke, he's a fucking lightweight. Oi! <laughs> Terry, I've warned you, don't talk about Tony like that. He's not fat. But he is fat. He could hire himself out as a bouncy castle at children's parties. <laughs> I mean, he's not tiny, Harris, is he? Shut up, Terry. Oi, Tony! It's survival of the fittest! You must have misheard it! Terry, <laughs> don't disrespect him. Tony Harris was the finest brewer at that brewery ever had. He worked for the man and boy, and then when they were done with him, they kicked him out on the street without any warning. I seem to remember there was some warning. Two written and three herbal. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from the actual warnings, there was no actual warning. There was. They warned him he'd lose his job. He didn't stop drinking brewery alcohol on brewery time and passing out every afternoon on brewery premises. Never let it be said of Tony Harris that he couldn't organise a piss-up in a brewery. <laughs> oh, he could, provided that the guest list was restricted to one. <laughs> That's something those suits of the brewery will never understand. I mean, there's a dignity in drinking on your own. It's a thing of poetry. It's beautiful. I mean, it shows that you love the booze for itself, yeah? <laughs> Not as some sort of fair-weather friend. I love you. <laughs> I mean, social drinkers make me sick. The sort of people who need an excuse, like at the birth of a child or a wedding, to get them into a pub. They're, they're, they're amateurs, part-timers. Excuses for drinkers. Yeah, but Tony, he's an alcoholic. It's sad. <laughs> You know, we don't call them that. Yeah, I prefer the term booze bees who turn Mother Nature's nectar into liquid golden honey. <laughs> buzz, buzz, gum. Help Oh, no, you should never be ashamed of drinking, Terry. Because at least by drinking, we're doing something, aren't we? Hey? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing these days. People live longer than they have in all of human history, and what do they do with that extra time? 
Nothing. Yeah? People these days actually look forward to doing nothing, don't they? Yeah? What are you doing the weekend? Nothing. I can't wait. Yeah? <laughs> what did you do last night after work? I did nothing. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah? What are you doing in the summer? I'll go to Portugal for two weeks. It's going to do nothing. It's going to cost us four grand. It's going to be blinding. Yeah? <laughs> so I'll never be ashamed of drinkers. At least by drinking, we are doing something. I'm one of life's high achievers. <laughs> yeah. And one for Tony. Oh, I think he's had enough, Terry. Nonsense. 25 pints, that's 35 pints short of his age. Uh, Terry, I don't think it's fair to expect everyone to do that pint for every year of their life birthday thing. I mean, the man nearly died last year. Right. <laughs> I'll pay for him. All right, fair play. <laughs> There you go, Tony. <laughs> Nineteen sixty-seven, summer of love. Mm. I was twelve, but I had to be part of it, so I ran away from the home and went to San Francisco. Let me tell you, Gov, what an amazing city. San Francisco is nothing special. It's just Brighton with a bridge. <laughs> I flogged the Holmes minibus to raise the money and let me tell you it was well worth it because that summer I lost my virginity. You lost your virginity when you was 12? That's 11 years you've got on me, you, you bastard! That, that's immoral! Or lucky, depending on your point of view. <laughs> she was a lovely girl, six foot tall, very flamboyant dress sense, lots of makeup, big, strong hands. Um, seriously? <laughs> I think that she might... She was my first fiance, as it happens. She insisted we were engaged before we made love. She instilled a sense of decency in me that I've never forgot. To this day, I've never made love to a woman who wasn't my betrothed. You chump! <laughs> oh, well, neither have I. Mm. And <laughs> no, although I didn't know any better at the time, she was very unusual down below. Oh, yeah. Because her what's it, you know, her, her licorice. <laughs> you had no problem in finding it, not like with some girls. And it was huge! It must have been about six inches long. <laughs> and her vagina, well, it was right round the other side. <laughs> and it was tiny. I mean, I wasn't complaining. Oh, it sounds great. <laughs> no, <you're confused. laughs> and although we loved each other, it was never a be. They wouldn't marry us. They said it was against the law. Cos I was a 12-year-old boy and she was a 35-year-old transvestite. <laughs> I mean, it made no difference to me what religion she was. <laughs> we were in love. Repressed times. It was that that made me realise the whole free love thing was a sham. That and the fact that she charged me 50 bucks a go. <laughs> I came home older and wider. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Terry, you're, you're lucky never to have been married. Marriage is a mug's game. All women are whores. All of them, whores! Especially the ones that charge you for sex, eh? Yeah. <laughs> More than any others, yeah. Gov, I know we're mates and therefore I don't talk about our feelings and that, but, um, this ain't bothering you. What? No. I, I may not be the most her suit of men. <laughs> But I've noticed you haven't been feeling yourself tonight. Right? Would you like me to feel yourself for you? No! I'll tell you what you want to do is dislocate your arms for a bit and then feel yourself as kind of like someone else doing it for you. No, it's not that, Terry. It's just... Oh, my divorce came through today. Oh, well, thanks very much for bringing that up. Hey? You really know how a man's feelings, don't you? You what? I've never been married, and here you are getting divorced. <laughs> you lucky bastard. Go on, go on, kick me while I'm down. <laughs> it, do you want to know why she divorced me, though, mate? Hey, shall I tell you what the grounds were? I'll tell you. She said, she said that I, me, she said that I had never achieved anything. Me! Never achieved anything. You? Never achieved anything? Well, that's ridiculous. You can... You can talk burp. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> oh, I feel 
not sick. No, that's, <laughs> a, that's an achievement. Yeah, but it's not as good as talk farting, no. Sausages as well. <laughs> yeah. Mmm. It's it's pork <laughs> and leek. <laughs> oh, it's not what it looks like, Tony. <laughs> uh, don't worry about him. He's out for the count. Oh, oh we can't leave him in the door like that. It's it's, it's his birthday. Well, not by my watch, eh? Oh. No, don't you see? Terry, this is our chance. Our chance to actually do something. To achieve something. To do something difficult. To show my wife. We're going to get Tony upstairs in the bed. He's not my type, Gov. <laughs> All those chins, you'd be lucky to find his mouth. No. <laughs> not like that. Jesus. Still. Two years. No. <laughs> We'll get him upstairs into bed to sleep the booze off. A man of that size, it's impossible. Couldn't be done. They said that Captain Scott couldn't get to the Antarctic and back. He couldn't. <laughs> That's not the point. Come on, let's lift him up. Come on, come on. Oh. 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 Get up, you bad lump! Oh. Left of it, right up here! To me! To me! Oh. Get him up, oh. back him up. That's it, let's get him on the stool. Just there. Oh. Gently, gently, see Tony. <laughs> my stool, my beautiful stool. Now I know the baby bear felt. Bastard Goldilocks. <laughs> What's going on up here? Some of us are trying to sleep down there. Crosby, that's coming out your wages. <laughs> I'm so glad you woke up, Crosby. It's going to be a lot easier with your help. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to help you. <laughs> God, I need to stick him on the pool tank. He's a human being, not a cue ball. I don't know, he's perfectly spherical. Don't talk about him like that. <laughs> what you have to do is to show my wife I can do something. Yeah, now, will she find out about this? Don't worry, I'll tell her. Can't do anything, he's any you cow. Can't do anything, can I? Can't do anything. <sighs> oh, Christ, he's gone. Oh, I can't do anything, arseholes. <laughs> Go. We can get us another fight. I can't. I can't do anything. Crosby, do the honours. Oh. We've earned these. <laughs> oh. I miss my boy, that's all. I wonder what he's doing right now. I expect he's asleep. Yeah, I suppose he is. What with it being night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, isn't it? Our life's wheel turns around. You know, you see signs of everywhere you go, don't you? Life's wheel. I mean, on the high street, you see those little cobblers in the windows of cobblers. That little fella, yeah, with the rosy cheeks, holding a shoe in his hand and a tiny hammer, going tink, 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 like that. Little fella in a brown coat, yeah, joyous smile on his face, happy in his chosen profession, going tink, 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 like that. Little shoe. <laughs> tink, 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 he does all day, like that. It's beautiful, isn't it? If you notice, though, in the chemists now, there's a similar little fella, very similar, except he's in a white coat, looks exactly the same as the other bloke, but in a white coat, filling bags of medicine, going feel, 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 like that. Feel, feel, feel. Not ding, 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 but feel, feel, feel. <laughs> so it's white coat, feel, feel, feel. Brown coat, ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. Feel, feel, feel. And you know what I reckon? I reckon that chemist, right, he's second generation, yeah? He's the cobbler's son, right? He's the cobbler's son. What happened? He did well at school. He saw what had become of his father, what his dad had done with his life. He thought, I'm not doing that. He got ambitions. Got his A-levels, went to university, red brick, nothing flash. First in the family to go, so his parents are delighted, right? And he sets himself up as a chemist, right? Then a few years later, he realises he's not that different from his old man at all. Yeah? Feel, 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 ding, ding, ding. Yeah. We're all the same in the end, it's just our coats are different colours. <laughs> all my job is his work's pull, pull, pull. And I can't even do that anymore. <laughs> Damn these useless hands! <laughs> Don't worry, Gov, I'm sure your barman's hand thing's just temporary. I'm incomplete, boy. I'm like an orange with no pips. I'm a sausage with no meat. I'm a monk with no erection. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Come on, Gov! We can do this. 
For your boy. Yeah! You're right! <laughs> right! Right, you fat boss. Here we go. Right! <laughs> 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 One, two, three! Rabbit speed! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's have a rest, boys. <laughs> you know, my mum always used to say to me, life, life is like trying to get a big fat man up some stairs to sleep off too much booze. Ooh. I never really knew what she meant until now. <laughs> Look, a shooting star. <laughs> Make a wish. <laughs> Hang on, did we all just wish Connie would fall in love with us? No. <laughs> Not me. I don't fancy her. She's ugly. Oh, please, Terry. That is the woman I'm going to marry. If only you could hear yourself, you poor, deluded fool. <laughs> I don't know. When you, when you look up at outer space, though, eh? You know, the glory of the galaxy, the majesty of the Milky Way, the order of the universe. Well, hey, it makes you feel tiny, doesn't it? Who told you about that? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Out of space, how big it is, makes you feel... Insignificant, you know. No. It makes me feel... significant. Well, I mean, what are the chances of us being here? I mean, not just the planet being able to sustain life or not having collided with an asteroid for millions of years, but... Well, Gov, think of it this way. What if your mum and dad didn't have sex the day you were conceived? They didn't. Hey? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, what if they'd had an argument? Or what if your dad, you know, had a crafty... Puke in the priest! Yeah. <laughs> in the afternoon and he'd spilled you on the ground, or, you know. What if another of those millions of sperms that accompanied you on that incredible exodus, what if one of them had made it to the egg first? You mean it wouldn't be me if it was a different sperm? Oh, no. I could be, say, talking to a six-foot blonde with... Big bazoomers if you sperm hadn't been the Duncan Goodyear of that generation. <laughs> Oi, you bastards! Sorry! Dan, think of that chance a million times over. All our ancestors avoiding death, destruction, reaching sexual maturity, finding somebody willing to shag them. Mm, that's the hardest part. Two years. <laughs> and your ancestral sperm always won that race. That continuous chain of chance that stretches back right through evolution. Right back to, like, the very first amoeba deciding he's fed up living with himself, he's going to get a place on his own. Two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, a massive inverted pyramid coming down on the tops of our heads. Billions of ancestors shagging like crazy. We're the result. If that doesn't make you feel significant, I don't know what can. It's all very well, Crosby, but you are insignificant. <laughs> You're the most insignificant person I know. I mean, you live in a cellar, for Christ's sake. You're the sort of bloke who'd stare into the abyss, and the abyss wouldn't stare back at you, look over your shoulder at someone more interesting. <laughs> right, come on, one last push. This will all be over by Christmas. Come right, on, boys. No, no, we have to be careful. This reminds me of the myth of syphilis. Well, that's no myth, mate. <laughs> no, you know, that ancient Greek story, this syphilis geezer has to push a boulder up an hill. Every time it gets to the top, rolls right back down to the bottom again. Ah, uh, typical Greeks who can't finish anything. No wonder Hercules is a legend in that country. A man with 12 jobs couldn't hold any of them down. <laughs> that would never happen to an Englishman. No. <laughs> Further go without me. Look, I'm slaying you down. No, we've got this far together. We've got to keep going. I'm so tired. <laughs> get off him! Get off him! Come on, buck your ideas up. It's 6 a.m. We've got to get this man into bed before dawn. Yeah, I love to wake up with a crack of dawn. Lovely girl, that dawn. <laughs> <laughs> go 
place. Come on, Terry. Stop it! Now is not the time for ribaldry and rudeness. Come on, just a few more feet. Get door. Oh, God. That's it. Just a few more steps. This is one small step for man. And one giant fat bastard up on the back. Easy does it. Oh, go on away. I think he'd have woken up by now if he was going to. I think I've dislocated my old body. <laughs> we did something. We actually achieved something. <laughs> All for one! <laughs> and one for the road. Yeah, Steve, get us a pint, would you? I'd love to, go, but I can't move. <sighs> oh. <sighs> <sighs> it's a far, far better thing than we have done today than we have done before. We carried him through the streets. We carried him through the pub. We carried him up the stairs. We did not surrender. You know, I love you two. I do. I, I really love you. I love you like a, like a son and, and like my slightly unusual uncle that mum won't leave me alone in a room with. <laughs> sure, the very best mates in the world a man could ever have. Yes, you are. And today we have achieved something. Something, something unique. Something beautiful. <laughs> something that will bind us together. For all eternity. <laughs> hmm. No! <laughs> Never confuse. <laughs> there you go, darling. I achieved something. I really achieved something.